Welcome to Shannon's Club TV, where we explore the legacy of significant cars in Australia. Coming up on the show, we'll hit the road in a well-preserved example of our feature car and get some valuable tips from the Shannon's auctions team. Right now though, the car that was pivotal in Ford Australia finally gaining sales leadership over Holden, the XB Falcon. Ford Australia was building a strong marketing advantage over its rivals in the early 1970s. The XB, proclaimed as the great Australian road car, succeeded the XA after merely 20 months. New features included standard ventilated front disc brakes, four-wheel discs on GTs, a new steering column and, mounted on it, a first for homegrown cars, a headlight flasher, just like Europe. Ford Australia's marketing surge, which lasted from 1965 until well into the early 1980s, really began when that brilliant American Bill Burke was appointed sales and marketing manager, as well as deputy managing director to Wallace Booth. Bill Burke had established a reputation as a man who could come up with brilliant schemes. He arrived in Australia in February 1965 and almost immediately came up with a 70,000 mile durability run on the new Yu Yang's Proving Ground as the perfect way to launch the XP Falcon. Mark, Falcons had driven a long way on the racetracks of Australia since the early 1960s, hadn't they? Oh, they sure did by the time the XB came around. You, know, you had the, uh, the, the birth of the Falcon GT and that fantastic GTHO era. And then by 1972, with the launch of the XA, we saw the return of a two-door Falcon hardtop. So in a way, the Falcon went full circle. And, uh, and the last of the original GT generation, the XB GT hardtop, that enjoyed a fair amount of success in racing, which I'll get to a little bit later. The XB is arguably the most effective facelift ever given to an Australian car. So often the original shape is best and the so-called facelift undermines the purity of the original. Three Ford Oz Design Amigos had flown to Dearborn to design the all new third generation XA Falcon under head office supervision. They were Jack Telnack, Brian Rossi and Alan Jackson. Years later, Telnack opined that the XB was the best executed of the three models, XA, XB and XC. The $3.8 million spent on the XP did produce a notably superior car to its predecessor, which was already mostly better than its rivals. The devil was in the detail, such as improved heating and, importantly in the context of 1973, a better ashtray. Three on the tree was still the standard transmission, but first now had synchro. Wagons could be fitted with a third rear-facing seat. Engine choices were 200 and 256s, 302 and 351 V8s. It was during these years that the Falcon began to beat the Belmont Kingswood Premier in the sales race, offering more value and refinement. An XB specified with the 250 engine, four on the floor, power steering and wider wheels with steel belted radials was quite the driver's Australian sedan, the great Australian road car. And Mark, it wasn't just the sales race Falcons were winning, was it? No, no, they were trying to beat the Tirana L34s on the racetrack. And at one stage, that was looking like a race for survival. The politically driven death of the XA Falcon GTHO Phase 4 just prior to its Bathurst debut in 1972, was a bitter blow for Ford fans. However, little did they know that the spirit of Ford's stillborn supercar would be kept alive on the racetrack, as many of its components ended up in the XB GT hardtop. The demise of Ford's works team in 1974 left former lead driver Alan Moffat to fly the blue oval flag almost on his own. However, the factory was still keen to assist through the back door, gaining approval for numerous Phase 4 engine parts to be used in Moffat's Bathurst attack in a specially prepared XB GT hardtop reportedly given a top secret makeover in the US. After trouncing Holden's new V8 Tiranas in the Sandown 250, Moffat's much anticipated Bathurst attack three weeks later was crippled by a multitude of problems, which forced its early retirement when many laps behind. It was a most humiliating defeat. 
John, despite everything that went wrong with that year, you know, Moffat's car in 1974 at Bathurst, that just had to be one of the best looking race cars ever on the mountain. Well, I thought all the XA, XB, XC race mm. cars, hard tops, looked fantastic they did. because they fulfilled the design of the car, which was originally designed with those huge rear guards mm. to accommodate huge rear Big wheels, but the bean counters said no. Mm. And it was only the race cars really that got that. Yeah, got and, that and so the road cars, the tyres looked actually a little bit too skinny for that body, didn't they? Underdone, absolutely. Yeah. I can yeah, remember certainly. walking around the pits after Bathurst and you'd see one of these cars on the trailer, you could not get your finger no. between the, the, the lip of the guard and the tyre. They were, they were that big, they were using up every millimetre. Yeah. And they were using up the whole design. Yeah, it was yeah. good to see, wasn't it? Terrific. While Moffat regrouped in 1975, privateer Murray Carter in his XBGT was often the only Falcon driver taking on a multitude of Tiranas. And things didn't look much brighter at Bathurst with only three XBGTs entered. Moffat's rebuilt hardtop was fast but fragile, eventually joining Carter and 1974 winner John Goss in the Dead Falcon car park. However, the best was yet to come for the XBGT, with Moffat benefiting from Ford's renewed interest in racing to topple the Tirana V8s in the 1976 Australian Touring Car Championship. Its fourth and final season was also its finest, with more XBGTs appearing on the track. Moffat and former Holden hero Colin Bond also joined forces in a factory-backed two-car super team that dominated the first half of the 1977 season. The cars were then updated to the latest XC500GS specification to terrorise the Tiranas in the endurance races, including the famous 1-2 formation finish at Bathurst. Remember to join the Shannons Club, where you can connect with other enthusiasts around the country. Hi, my name's Michael. This is my 1976 XB GT Falcon. The car is a poverty pack GT. It's all original. From factory, this is the way it's come out. Uh, it's a 351 motor. It's black trim, still got the original tyres on it. No radio, no power windows. It is a manual, which makes it more desirable. But the only thing that's been changed in this vehicle is pretty much a battery and the exhaust. Motorsports history has been, you know, a passion for me and going back to the Bathurst days when the XWs and the XYs were racing, that was special and I've always been passionate about Ford. This is one of a few that I've got. My dad's had a collection of cars and as we grew up, we had Fords in our family. So yeah, so it's still in the blood. I'm a Shannon's customer. I've been with Shannon's for around about 14 years now. My experience with Shannon's been great. I've ensured my collection of cars and also my daily drivers with Shannon's. The favorite feature of the car for me, I think the combination of the color. But again, the, the bigger thing for me, I think is the originality of the car. It's only traveled 27,000 kilometers in its lifetime. That's been nearly six years now and it speaks for itself. My future plans for the car, I'm not sure yet. You know, I think the car really belongs in a museum. It goes well with my collection, but yeah, I'm not sure yet. Favorite memory of the car, I think, is the day I went to pick it up. You know, I got the keys in my hand and jumped in it and drove it home, cruising down the, the, the highway and can't explain it. Just a wow, like, it's mine now. Well, Chris Borobon, Shannon's National Auctions Manager, joins us to bring us right up to speed on the XB Falcon. Welcome, mate. Hello, Mark. Chris, John. The XB Falcon, mm. I guess racing has brought the values up. Would that, is that a fair thing to say, that fantastic racing history? Yeah, look, I think part of that is absolutely true. And, and today, I think, uh, you know, we're privileged to still see those cars out on the racetrack, uh, you know, whether it's in TCM or whether it's in historic Group C. So, you know, fantastic to see those hardtop keeps racing. The, and the XA, XB hardtops, Ford had a lot of trouble selling them when they were brand new. They had all kinds of special editions, the John Goss special, for example, to try to move them. 
and yet now they're just so sought after. Mm. It's remarkable, isn't yeah, it, how a bit yeah. of history changes things. Mm. There was a big range of cars, wasn't it? I mean, oh. typically you had sedans, you had two-door hardtops, wagons, panel vans, yutes, yeah. and all the luxury. LTDs, yeah, and even the Landau. That's so right. that's, yeah. a, that's a lot of cars to choose from. Is the picking yeah. order still traditionally? Uh, a GT Falcon and then you work your way down? Is that the way it's working? Exactly right. Yeah. I, I, look, it's still the same case. You know, the GT hardtop obviously is, you know, the favoured option. Then, then you the, the GT, GT sedan. Yeah. Um, you know, Landau's have come into their own, you know. They're very sought after. Amazing, isn't they? They yeah, weren't sought after at all. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. yeah, they are. Um, and you've also got the, you know, for me, I really love the Fairmont GS. Mm. You know, it was just... The yeah. nice type kit, it, yep. it just looked lovely, yeah. But that's yep. one of the ways that Ford Australia showed its marketing smarts, didn't they? I mean, yep. to offer the GS packs. The GS the Rally The person pack. that couldn't afford mm. the GT that's would right, get the yep. GS Rally pack for mm. quite and, and a very small amount of money. And, we, and still with the 351 in it. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So, yeah. you know, it was a great package. Yes. Yeah. And you mustn't forget the XB was the last of the first generation GT. GTs, so yes. that has a lot of significance for collectors, I think. And also, mm. there were some really unusual things they did as part of this uh, the surfing craze of the 70s. 70s. We had yep. these special offerings, lifestyle machines, different um, panel vans and things mm. like that. So do you ever see those things around these days? Look, we don't see too many panel vans around. Mm. Uh, you know, there is the occasional panel van that comes in and and probably the condition's not the best. But um, to try and find one in mint condition today is getting very hard to find. It would be, they, yeah. They mm. were pretty good wagons too, weren't they? Built on the Fairlane wheelbase, yep. XA and XB. Pretty spacious, pretty practical, spacious, kind yeah, of a lot good to drive too. Yep. So in terms of desirability, I mean, we always say the, XC, the the GT models at the top when we talk about Falcons, but those those luxury cars, we mentioned them, the, the Fairlane, the LTD and the Landau, they would have to be really close. If you're talking about a one-owner peach car, that would have to be pretty desirable, wouldn't it? There was definitely a desirability factor in the Fairlanes. Mm. You know, we, we've seen those appreciate over the years as well. I still think the Landau's probably mm. right up there as a two-door. Yeah. I always thought uh, the Landau top, yeah. was a fantastic idea. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And probably an expensive car in its day, and mm. uh, but you know, t I think when we look at it today, it, you, you would probably appreciate what went into it. Mm. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thanks for joining us, Chris. No and maybe you can keep up to date with all the latest Shannon's auctions news on the Shannon's Club website. If you'd like a memorable race image of the XB Falcon, check out the archive at autopix.com.au. John, looking back at the XB Falcon, I mean the XB, I guess symbolises a time in Ford Australia when they got market leadership from Holden. They were really on the money in all areas, weren't they? Well, it wasn't just a fluke that they got it. They, mm. they had cars to appeal to every level, of, in, from the company sure chief did. executive officer with the, with the LTD or mm. the Landau all the way down, and offered cars in special fleet colours, to like Bramble's Red is the one that springs to mind, almost mm. the same as Vermilion Fire. They had all that stuff worked out. And the vehicles were quite clever. Like the ute, which we haven't really talked about, was almost Australia's first sports ute. Mm. A true coupe utility sharing its doors with the with Falcon the, hardtop. With the hardtop, yeah. yeah. And the Falcon wagon, of course, that was a huge hit with the fleets. With the longer wheelbase, plus, and being, leaf spring plus the end. great Australian road car, good to drive. So they had mm. every base covered, but they really were more intelligent, not only in getting the private buyer, but also in selling their product to the fleets. Mm. And it all you trace back to that magic that Bill, Bill Burke, Bill Burke, brought Bill to Burke the yep, yeah, absolutely. Amazing yep. time. Yep. Well, we hope you've enjoyed reflecting on the pivotal XB Falcon. We hope you can join us next time for Shannon's Club TV. Bye for now.